the time of recording this, it was just my birthday. And what do I do when it's my birthday? I buy art supplies. Who am I kidding? I always buy art supplies, but birthdays are just an excuse. So you guessed it, today, friends, I'm gonna take what I gifted myself with in terms of art supplies and make some art with it. But these supplies are a bit strange. I hope it works. Okay, so I've never been a pastel person, but the colors of these drew me in. Now what I need you to understand, friends, I collect art supplies. The plastic situation in this in here is disappointing. Like there's so much plastic. It's that kind of plastic that like will slice your finger open if you look at it the wrong way. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, maybe that's their lid. I don't know. Like one of these has a lid. I don't know. I'm confused. Like this one has a lid. Feels the same. This one has a lid. It's like makeup. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to get over it. Get over it. Get over it. Okay, and I got this color one too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get hurt. I'm gonna get hurt. Wait, what are these for? Or, I think there was something in that box. Yeah, there's something in here. <laughs> I'm getting so angry about the plastic. This is what I'm most excited about. Okay. The Holbein gouache. Now this is, let me say real gouache. This isn't the acrylic wash. You've seen me use acrylic wash quite a bit. Acrylic wash really designed for acrylic artists who want a matte finish, not like a shiny finish. All right. So acrylic wash does not re-wet with water. This is real wash. And we've got the seasonal sets. I forget the name. The, oh yeah, the Iridori, which is just one of the, I think the brand names like that they use. I, I, I'm not sure what it means. Um, but I know there's an Iridori collection in watercolor as well with Holbein. So we've got winter, winter, autumn, autumn, not fall, spring, and of course, summer. So let's take a looky-loo at these. So their interpretation of summer is like super dupes, like uh, saturated, fun. And then spring. The spring was surprising. I'm going to admit, I took a little peeky poo at this and I was like, oh, a little surprising. I thought it'd be more pastel. I'm not angry about it. I was just, you know. Yeah. And we seem to be following a similar kind of color family. You know, we've got the warms. We've got, uh, well, yeah, yellows, which are warm. <laughs> Green family blues. And then your neutrals. I don't know. I, I thought I was going to be more excited because a whole line watercolor Gosh, when you open those boxes and you see some of the labels and you're like, look at those convenience colors. I'm so excited. Like, I'm not getting that same feel, but like, whatever. That doesn't really mean anything. That's just me being emotional. I'm really curious to see the winter least exciting, like in terms of the packaging. Again, what does that mean? That just means Christy Rice is bored, which means nothing. It's unimportant information. However, you know, good quality watercolors, you can't always tell anything from just looking at how does it look in the pan. So, you know, can we tell anything from the, the paper label? Probably not. Now friends, if you're wondering, yes, 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 I'm going to be creating some art with all of this today, all in one piece, because this is how I do it. Now the next thing though that I splurged on, I was watching the YouTubes and somebody, I will put it below, she was doing a haul and she got the book of Earth. A guide to ochre pigment and raw color. Um, I was more interested and excited about the cover, completely judging this book by its lovely cover. But I, I am curious about, you know, the pigment, the actual non-synthetic pigments that come from the earth. And the, the photography in this book is off the charts. Nothing gets me quite excited as uh, an image of pigments in cute little vintage bottles all lined up on a wall. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. This page alone is giving me the inspirations. And let me tell you what, I need the inspirations. I need the inspirations because I did not come to this video today with a plan other than being my goofy, silly self and looking at this stuff and then being like, what should I paint? So that's about it for my plan. Now, this was a decidedly small haul, small haul, small haul that rhymes given my 
my historical birthday hauls, but um, it's okay. It's what I was feeling. So this is a gift. This is actually a little gifty gift I got. In your curious friends, I am uh, curious to know, that is, I'm big on making your art, even in your early beginner phases and giving it away. I have a whole video about it. You're gonna wanna check it out below because gifting your art can be one of the most freeing things you do on this journey. One of the things I love most about, it's typically Etsy sellers that get really get their packaging on. Okay, let's get into it. Hi there, thanks so much for buying from my Etsy shop. I did not buy this, this was a gift. She reached out to me and was like, hey, I wanna make you a journal. Not, not gift you a journal, no, make you a journal. So Instagram is artsy Rosie, A-R-T-S-I-R-O-S-I. See it on the screen there. You see it on the screen there. Artsy Rosie, go check her out, okay? Here are samples of some of the papers I carry in my store. So she makes journals, friends, and um, you can pick different elements of your, um, I believe it's your binding, your cover, color. If it's not your binding, I, I'm sorry. Your paper, love that, that she sent the examples. Look at this, look at this. Oh, so beautiful. It's just layers of happiness. It's like a non-stinky onion. It's a lovely, lovely onion. Look at the layers. Okay, here we go. So this is what I chose. I chose a craft cover, all right? And then I chose the fun multicolor thread binding. And friends, look at this. This is the watercolor paper inside. Now this, uh, I just, Okay, so this paper that she used, I forget what paper I chose. I don't even know if I chose the paper, but I, she did ask if I liked hot press or cold press, and I told her like textural heavy cold press. So that's why you're seeing this curling. And some of you, I just think that is so aesthetically pleasing. Hello. Let's just, let's have a moment for this. Let's have a moment. That is so aesthetically pleasing. But you're probably wondering, because I know a lot of you folks out there worry about your paper warping. Um, it's not something that bothers me, but what I'm doing is just gonna, I'm gonna reshape this a little bit. Something that you could do if you ever get a handmade journal like this that is doing funky, funky, delicious things is that you just reshape the pages. You can go in and reshape individually. You could even spray the pages a little bit. I do not um, do that whole thing where like I dunk my, what's that called? Paper stretching, I don't do that. Maybe this could be considered like a modified version of that. Spray it a little bit so it gets uh, just a little more supple, if you will. Whichever page you're planning on working on, you can work on that one first. So what I will probably do with this is clip these to get them a little bit un more under control. I'm gonna use one of these sample papers to protect the paper underneath and we'll just clippy clip that and then I'll be able to more easily work on a page. But yeah, that's what I would do there. That doesn't bother me at all. Isn't that lovely? So good. I love this book. I love the simplicity of it. There's a focus on the paper quality. I also love that it lies flat. This is huge for me with sketchbooks. All right, so thank you so much, Artsy Rosie. This is going to be super fun today. And of course, this is what I'm going to use. Today, a uh, little extra mail time I wanted to share because I, I don't think I've shared this often enough. Y'all send me artwork and um, special little messages and loveliness. I'm not gonna read her letter to me because, you know, Often when folks uh, send me artwork, they're sharing. They're sharing deeply personal things and it means the absolute world to me. But look at this, this is from Misty. And I opened this, well, this came as a postcard. So it was like right up in my face. As soon as I opened my mailbox, it was like a beacon of watercolor light shining from within my mailbox. And just look at that, gorgeous. I suspect definitely mixed media here, white gel pen, of course, watercolor. And I love this diagonal split, how it just cuts the visual field in half, but it's working beautifully. It's balanced your, your eye. There's definitely a focal point, even though it's cutting the paper right in half. Um, your eye knows where to go because these leaves are getting smaller and smaller. I mean, just so much here that makes me so happy. I'm very curious about the color behind this side. Like what is this color? It's not the white of the page, clearly. 
Like, what is that, Misty? Misty, get in the comments. Misty, let us know what you did there because it's just luscious and fascinating. We want to know. We want to know. Does anybody else want to know? Let Misty, let Misty know in comments. Be like, hey, Misty, what is that lovely lavenderish awesomeness on the background of your postcard you sent Christy? One more card. Uh, this was just a, a lovely card from one of my patrons, Leslie. And it was uh, just a sympathy card because my father-in-law did pass away at the near the time of this recording. So thank you so much, Leslie. And I, it did not go unnoticed that the watercolor, the watercoloriness of this card. And it looks like there's hand-painted gold on here. I mean, come on now. So, so thoughtful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Before I started creating the artwork with my supplies, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to paint. And usually when that happens, I default to flowers. So yeah, you guessed it. Now I'm starting with these pan pastels. And honestly, they're just so strange to me. And I immediately thought, once I started putting down some of the pastels, what are you doing, Christy? Like, these are dry and they're probably gonna resist the watercolor. I did love the velvety touch of the pastel. It had a tell quality that no pastel I've ever used had. Softer, velvetier, did I already say velvet? I think I said velvet, but yeah, you know what I mean. And, you know, even though, like, just kind of the cheese factor of the plastic supplies to apply the pastel with kind of just threw me off. They just weren't very pretty. And y'all know, I, I'm all about pretty art supplies. But that aside, they worked. It felt like I was applying makeup to my watercolor paper, but it worked. It was time to crack open the gouache tubes and I got a cute little half moon plate someone told me once what these plates were made for i mean these are from like the victorian era or something i think where like you know there were like 89 pieces of flatware when you sat down to eat dinner um if anybody remembers what these plates were for please let us know in comments but anywho i'm putting my paint on for right now and getting into this i have just kind of a ghost image in the background and I'm gonna just try to paint right over top. I don't know, do you think it's gonna work? Do you think it's gonna resist? Yeah, let me know in comments. Yeah, yep, yep, it resisted. Absolutely, freaking lutely it resisted. But I just add a little more water to my brush and things were a-okay. I thought this was going to be successful because in the reviews for the pan pastels, I read that they were a bit water soluble. I'm going to experiment with that a little bit later, I'm sure. But for now, just adding a little bit more water to my gouache on the brush or on the palette seems to kind of like solve the resisting issue. I really am enjoying the way these two mediums are blending and mixing and mingling on the page. Indeed, the pan pastels are water soluble. You can see there at the bottom, you can see on the right where I'm adding a little bit of, of water from my dirty brush and it's moving and grooving. It's moving and grooving and I'm excited about that. I also noticed that once I was able to lay down enough paint, so picking up a lot of gouache on my brush, and laying it down thickly, I was not getting any resisting at all from the pastel underneath on the first layer of the page. And that made me so happy because friends, I am in love with this misty, kind of powdery, kind of ethereal background that the pan pastels created and then getting really thick, almost impasto type brush strokes on top. And especially, where a brush stroke, a single brush stroke is going through both a pastel area and a non-pastel covered area, like that leaf kind of slightly left of center of the sketchbook seam. Oh my gosh, I love what's happening there.
now I spent a good amount of time, real time, I probably spent about 15 to 20 minutes building up this composition. And now I'm going back in with the pastels and I'm actually kind of doing the same press and lift, press and lift that I do with my brushes with watercolor. And it's, it's working, it's taking on the shape of that like sponge tip, which is super interesting to me. And again, I love the feel of it underhand. I love the way that the softness, the like diffused kind of impression that that um, applicator makes, how it contrasts with the really kind of thick and opaque nature of the gouache. Really interesting. Now friends, let me know, do you think you would be curious about trying this combination. Uh, and you know what, if you don't have pan pastels, a couple of things, number one, just use regular pastels. If you don't have regular pastels, um, go and get you some eyeshadow. Just go into that makeup drawer. You know you have some unused eyeshadow just swimming around in there. Just use eyeshadow. I think you're gonna get very similar results. All right, of course, I gotta get a little crazy. I have a thing for applying paint sometimes directly from the tube. So here I'm taking the red gouache. I don't even know exactly what the color name is or what season box it's from. It doesn't matter. And I'm just pressing lift with a very, very, very slight squeeze to kind of get some like berry action going here. And you know, the thing is you see me doing weird things like this where I'm not using a brush, I'm using my fingers or I'm using the tube as like a drawing tool. And the reason is it's not because I'm actually that much of a wackadoodle. It is because I like having a variety of, of marks and kind of the character of different types of marks when you make them different ways. Because everything that's made with a brush is going to have a similar character. So I really, you know, variety is the spice of life, friends. And you know what else is the spice of life? It is a boop on this video. And a boop, friends, is a like. So if you feel so inclined, you're having a good time, you're, you know, getting something out of this video, you had an aha moment, number one, share it below. But number two, go ahead and give this video some love because it really helps out my channel. And gosh, yeah. Thanks in advance. Now, if you want to actually know a little bit more about gouache in a more kind of controlled environment, not this like crazy off the wall mini art hall, you're gonna wanna watch this video next where I talk about the differences between gouache and watercolor. Till next time, happy painting.